All right, we're having a look at the button layout for the Super Hogster LRF uh, scope from Bearing Optics. It now has four uh, hard key buttons on the top dead center of the scope. We'll go through uh, quickly what the symbols are on each of these buttons. So the very forward button has a power symbol. The next one in line is a forward directional button followed by one that has three bars synonymous with a listing feature or menu feature and the rear has a back directional button so those are the symbols of the four buttons on top of the Super Hogster LRF um, I'll explain as I'm going through the menu walkthrough uh, which buttons I'm pressing in order to navigate the menus and as well I'll go through what the hotkey assignments are for these buttons. All right, so we'll start with the uh, four buttons on top of the Super Hogster LRF. Uh, the power button, you press and hold that. When the scope is off for two to three seconds, it'll go through a startup uh, period and then we'll display the main screen as shown. Further presses of the power button alone, so pressing it quickly one time is going to auto calibrate the scope. So you'll hear a shutter here in a second. There you go, so that calibrates it. Pressing and holding the power button for two seconds will bring up this menu. You use your forward and your rear directional arrows to navigate the options. Clicking standby requires a menu or an enter button key press for which the display will go off. Pressing any button will resume the scope, negating the need for a full boot up but rather it's instantly ready. So that's standby and then again pressing and holding the power that's also how you power off. Alright moving down to the main uh, three buttons uh, if you press quickly the middle menu list button that's gonna bring up your sub menu your short menu. Now to toggle between the options on the short menu you have to keep pressing the middle or menu button. So I'll go ahead and cycle through those now. Pressing the same button quickly to navigate through each menu item that I use to enter this shortcut menu. Therefore, the forward and back directional keys are going to run us through each specific menu's options. So we'll start with a short menu. Uh, pressing the forward directional button, there are five color modes. Highlight, it also changes the icon in the upper left for a quick visual reference so that you don't have to enter the menu to realize which uh, color palette you're in. All right, menu button takes us to screen brightness, of which there are five steps. menu button takes us to image sharpness of which there are five steps and then you have your zeroing distances you can choose between the three defaults of 100 200 and 300 yards image brightness different than screen brightness or independently controlled different than screen brightness. And image contrast. Again, five options there. So lots of options for the user to manually configure their image uh, and the settings to get the best possible image. That is the short menu in totality. The main screen Hopefully I'm in good as focus as I can get. Cover the main screen quickly. So you've got the color palette icon upper left. The rifle profile A, B, C, D uh, are options. So we're in rifle profile A at the 100 yard zero setting or trajectory. Uh, the next icon you see it counting down right on time for us is your auto calibration. Then you have your base magnification of 3.5. And your uh, that eyeball is the uh, image enhancement option. 
usually for uh, high humidity climates or uh, adverse weather conditions. It, it's an extra feature that you'll see in the long menu here. You can turn that on or off. Uh, time is in the upper right, as well as your battery uh, status and the type of power cell you're running. So within the power cell right now, it says NICD for nickel cadmium. Uh, and then you have a reticle there. I will make note here, there's times when buttons get pressed inadvertently. If you press and hold all three buttons at one time for 10 seconds, I'm pressing them, all three, the forward directional, the menu, and the rear directional, that's gonna shut off your reticle. Uh, you also lose your rifle profile and the heads up display and your zero trajectory. So if you don't have a reticle in your screen and you're lacking the rifle profile and zero trajectory, this is what has occurred. You've uh, inadvertently had three buttons pressed simultaneously to get it back forward directional menu and rear directional for 10 seconds. We'll bring that back to us. Very good. All right, to access the long menu, that middle menu key, you're gonna press and hold it. And instead of navigating the menu like we did in the short menu where you press the same menu key to go item by item, now the forward and rear directional buttons are how you move through the menu with the menu button being selecting between your options. So a, a change between the short menu and the use of the middle button and the long menu. So our first uh, feature is LRF on and off. Press the menu key to toggle that. You see the yardage bracket come up in the upper right. It's now in continuous scan mode. Next option is LRF timer. You can choose how long it scans in continuous scan mode before uh, timing out. One, five, 10, and 30 minutes. We'll leave the timer off, meaning it's continually scanning. Here's the ultra clear or image enhancement uh, feature. Toggling removes that eyeball on the upper left HUD. Place it back. Wi-Fi on and off. Your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Core calibration, automatic, manual, or background. In background, you will need to close the shutter in order to nuke the scope. Manual, it'll require you to hit that power button in order to nuke the scope and then automatic it takes care of it for you. Picture in picture uh, doubles the main base magnification so it says there in the picture in picture window seven times. Compass trim or tilt, I'm sorry, tilt. Here's a uh, battery type so lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and alkaline AA. Scope should automatically switch those based on the uh, power that it receives or the battery that you input. Uh, reticle. Okay, again, profiles A, B, C, or D. You can choose uh, to use this on four various rifles or f one rifle with four various loads. Your, uh, your choice, let's keep it on A. Reticles. There are eight provided reticles. <clears throat> Starting here at number one, you can see the little blue crosshatch to the upper right of the main reticle. That's your LRF guide box. So that'll remain static and unchanged as we cycle through the reticles. So very familiar reticle package from prior bearing scopes. And then reticle nine is going to be blank. That's a placeholder for your custom reticle. Uh, if you actually select reticle nine, then that will give you no reticle. But unlike the three button presses we did earlier where we cancel the reticle altogether, the rifle profile and the distance are up in the upper left. So if you have this condition with no reticle, 
and a rifle profile and trajectory in the upper left, then you've got reticle 9 selected without a custom reticle in place. So you'll have to go into your reticle menu and choose one of the eight other options. All right, next is reticle color, black, white, and green, and red. And then if you go to this, it tells you to connect to the bearing application to do your custom reticle. This will be where you uh, enter that user interface. Now, notice when you just scroll over the option, you don't select it, but you just scroll over it, it automatically defaults at your reticle to 9, so you'll have to go back in and select an active reticle to have a reticle. So just passing over this option removes the reticle. Something for consideration. Next page, your settings, which is your date and time, your language, your units of measure, uh, your information screen for firmware, uh, hardware type, your factory reset is all under settings. Here's your zeroing menu. So it starts you off with the ability to enter different values for your different trajectories if you choose. Uh, once there you click on the item and you can either rename here at the 100 yard, you can rename it, or you can enter the zero menu where you change your X and Y value and move your reticle. Long presses of the menu key take you back. Your image hue between cool and warm. Dead pixel repair compass calibration and your standby timer if you uh, don't move the scope or it's in a vertical position for a set time then it will shut down the screen for you automatically leave that off and back to the main let's continue the button configuration we have the forward directional key a quick press is going to increase your zoom by 0.5 of a value. So I am quick pressing, you can see five times, 5.5. Pressing and holding the forward directional is going to step it up by two increments of two. You're able to use the rear directional in the same fashion. So no rheostat. <clears throat> control for zoom, no, uh, it, it has to be the forward and rear directional buttons. And if you go up to seven times manually by 0.5 values and you need to quickly get back to base, you can just press and hold that back key and it's there within a couple of seconds. So a little different interface for the uh, zoom progression. Um, let's see. Pressing and holding the last two, or quickly pressing the rear directional button and the menu button is going to result in a picture being taken. You see that photo icon come up in the upper left, so I'm quickly pressing back directional and the menu key if I press and hold. That's going to uh, initiate recording. For which you see the uh, countdown timer in the upper right. So pressing and holding the rear to the menu and the rear directional button is going to save that file. And pressing and holding the front two buttons or doing